Okay, okay, I wasn't planning on building a snowboard this year, but you, you convinced me. I know it's, uh, it's pretty late in the season to be starting a project like this, but I got a couple experiments I want to try, and I got a couple techniques that I want to share with you guys. So, hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads, and today I'm going to be starting what I hope will be actually a pretty simple snowboard build. My goal with this project is, as much as possible, to use material that I already have in the shop. And I'm also going to try to do it without a computer, so hopefully the techniques will be a little bit more accessible to hobbyists, and it'll also mean no templates and a lot less router work. So, a low-tech, highly accessible, hobby-level snowboard build. And if you've seen my other snowboard builds, one and a half-ish, you'll know that the first step is to make a core, and that's what I'm gonna be doing today. We gotta laminate some wood, so let's get cracking. I have got an extensive basement wood pile. With the exception of a couple strips of poplar left over from last year's build, none of this would normally be great for a snowboard core. I've got a bunch of walnut and some cherry, both of which are beautiful hardwoods, but they're also both really stiff. I used walnut for stringers in the last core I built, but truth be told, I couldn't actually tell you how it affected the ride. There were just too many variables. However, the fiberglass I'm using for this build is also something that I've already got in the shop, and it is a biaxial 45-45 degree weave, which means it's going to give a lot of torsional stiffness, but not as much strength along the length of the board. With that in mind, an extra stiff core might be exactly what I need. I got started by setting up a ripping guide on my bandsaw and cutting myself a bunch of staves. Laid down side by side, these give me the width that I'm going to need out of my core. And I've ordered the woods in a way that I hope will give some reinforcement and strength to my core. It also happens to be pretty aesthetically appealing. The next thing I need to do is glue my core together, and this is one of those new techniques I wanted to show you guys. If you're gluing strips of wood together, and you're working with stock that has already been cut pretty thin, you can use masking tape to tack the strips together side by side, And once all the strips are taped together, you can flip the whole ordeal over and one by one you can roll the wood slats off the edge of your bench. This opens up the gaps between the adjacent pieces of wood and allows you to apply glue to the seams, all while keeping everything aligned. Once all my joints were glued up, I laid the core on the table and weighed it down to keep everything flat. Then I broke out my entire collection of bar clamps to squeeze everything together. And taking a look, I've got squeeze out in all of my seams, so this layup is looking pretty dang good. I let everything cure overnight and remove the clamps and tape. I 
cleaned up the ends of the core on the bandsaw, then headed out to the garage to start profiling. I ran it through my planer to flatten out the top and the bottom surfaces, and then planed it down to the thickness I was aiming for for the center of my core, something around 7 millimeters. Next, I broke out the profiling cradle I made last year. My cradle is a set of 3D printed wedges attached to a plywood backing board, and you guys have been asking for the print files for this, but this particular cradle profiles the core to a very specific, very weird board geometry. But I've worked up some generic versions that I've dropped over in the shop at goodroadscollective.com. You could also easily make a cradle like this out of wood. All you'd have to do is take a thin piece of plywood, shim the nose and the tail to the height that you want, and screw it into a backing board. I already had the 3D printed version ready to go, but honestly, I'll probably do the wooden version in the future. It's less precise, but it's also a heck of a lot easier. The core is attached to the cradle using this cool double-sided masking tape stuff. I'll link to it down in the description. And then you run it through the planer until the tip and tail are as thin as you want them. And for my build, I'm aiming for just about two millimeters. I can tune it up later as needed. I really recommend taking just the smallest bit of wood off with every pass. The core gets really fragile as it approaches the final dimensions. Once the nose and tail are tapered, you pop the core out of the cradle and you're done. I squared up the ends of mine on the bandsaw, and in my opinion, that is one gorgeous snowboard core. I'm holding this up to the camera. I don't know if you guys can see the tapering. But it do be tapered. I don't know how functional it's gonna be with this wood selection. I'm sure it's gonna be strong enough. It's probably just gonna be stiff. I'm gonna be making the same style of powder board that I made last year, and for a board like that, stiffness can actually be a benefit. So, fingers crossed. So, I'm off on a new adventure. New snowboard core built, new snowboard build project started, and next week I'm gonna share something with you guys that I have been working on since last year. A little, little tool, a little something to help drill binding inserts. So I'm really excited to share that with you guys. It's been a long time coming. If you want to see that and tons of other awesome DIY board sport stuff, you should you should just go ahead and subscribe. The buttons, it's right down there. If you click it, it turns red and red's nicer than gray. So you should do that. Just, just think about it. Huge shout out as always to my supporters over on Patreon. I'm not going to need to acquire a ton of materials for this build, but I am going to need edges and I am going to need epoxy. And it's their support that's going to allow me to get those things. If you would also like to support the channel, there's a link right down in the description. Check it out. If you've got questions or comments, or if you're just hyped that I decided to jump down this crazy rabbit hole again, you can leave all that stuff down below. As always, I love having you along for the ride. So until next time, I'll see you soon. Just, just the littlest, just a little boop, just a little boop, little boop with the core, boop the core. Should I make a boop the core shirt? That'd be kind of funny.